guys, welcome to Piano Rogues. I'm Alaire. And I'm Ari. And today we are doing a music notation review of The Cat and the Mouse. Scherzo Humoristique by Aaron Copeland. Mm. So what squiggles do we have? <laughs> really? <laughs> All, well, really? <laughs> Is that starting with a rest? Yes, it starts with a rest. Well, why not put the rest on the other end? Because if we put it on the end, then it would be bum, 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 rest. Bum. Okay, so what does it sound like now? Bum, 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 bum. But we couldn't just put this guy back there and scoochy everybody? No, because if we did that, then we would have... Oh, that guy. Yeah. And the next measure. This guy. So we want them close <coughs> to that guy. Yes, exactly. We have a mezzo forte, which means to be medium loud. And then we have a little crescendo up to my mezzo forte. We have a diminuendo, which means get louder to mezzo forte and then get softer. And then all of a sudden, fortissimo. And then we have to get softer again and we end up back at piano, which is soft. Here's one of the interesting things about this piece. Copeland actually does this a few times where he has these fermatas, which generally would be put on a note value, but he puts it at the bar line instead. So there's no note value, um, but he just says at the bar line, fermata, and then he says long. So we're supposed to just stop at the bar line <laughs> and then just wait there for a while, which is kind of unusual. I can't think of another piece that I've seen that marking in. Okay, we're not ready for the second line yet. We aren't. We are not. Okay, what do I need? What's that? Well, let's get rid of some of the scribbles. These again. Oh, my little dotties. Mm -hmm. So we covered those in a previous episode. Those mean to play staccato. And we have... Which... Oh, excuse me. Those mean to play staccato, which means that the notes should be somewhat separated. However, at the same time, there is also a slur mark. So slurs usually mean to play smoothly. Staccatos usually mean to make the notes separated. Because these two are combined, we end up with a combination articulation that's called portato, where the notes are not meant to be truly connected, but they're like kind of staccato hmm. kind of connected it's always kind of been a weird articulation to me <laughs> <laughs> oh this is fun precipitously <laughs> so this has to be like it's just falling down the piano as fast as you can go kind of ish and then also like i said before fortissimo now we have something 10 <laughs> lh that's actually two things. If you look here, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five notes, and then one, two, three, four, five notes, and of course five plus five is 10. So this is saying this is a group of 10 notes. And that group of 10 notes it is for one beat in the music. There should be four beats in every measure. So all of this is one beat, and then all of this, this other group of 10 is one beat. And then this over here, that half note, is the other two beats. This doesn't look like this should be the same amount of time as this, but it is. And then we have the old style. Yeah, we have the old fashioned kind of pedal marks there. And then over here, he says, no pedal, Bad pedal. no pedal. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, normally in piano music, you will have um, a treble clef in the right hand and a bass clef in the left hand, but pretty much right away, Copeland says, nope, we're going to be treble clef in both hands. And then Just for that. Yep, and then he changes it over there. Well, okay, now we're ready for the second line. Yay, very fast and rhythmic. He gives us a completely different tempo here. We started out with moderately, and now he says very fast and rhythmic, and he actually tells us specifically exactly how fast that should go. Do you know I've actually never checked that? <laughs> that might be something to do. <laughs> I've never felt the need. I mean, I just play it the way it should sound. And it sounds right to me, so mm -hmm. I guess I'll be a good little pianist and check that at some point. Oh, we have first a natural. So the reason we needed this natural sign here was because Copeland wanted us to have an F natural instead of an F sharp. And according to our key signature, we're supposed to have both F sharp and C sharp anytime we encounter 
either of those notes. Um, he's actually gone ahead and canceled our C natural and our F natural. Oh, there's another one over here. <laughs> They're because it's an octave line. higher. Yes. <laughs> okay, fine. Do I need to circle all of them? <laughs> Look at this. See? See, he told us that he we would very had to excited have... with his <laughs> <laughs> natural. Well, I mean, he told us that we had to have the F sharp and C sharp throughout the piece, but then here he just completely immediately cancels them throughout both of these measures. Not to make life confusing or anything. No, it's fine. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here we have a uh, treble clef in the left hand, and then it goes back to bass clef, and then in the right hand it says bass clef, and then it goes right back to treble clef again. Because why not? Mm-hmm. It's fine. Anything interesting on this line? Um, kind of more the same. Here he's not canceling out the C sharps. We do get an E sharp. That's exciting. Mm. And we also get B flats. Mm. So these little doodads that look like itty bitty mini decrescendos are actually accent marks. Accent marks mean to make that note a little bit stronger than the ones around it. If my overall dynamic level is piano, then I might want to make my accent mark mezzo piano. Now we're at a new time. Right, so now we've changed time signature. No, we haven't changed it. Now we've changed tempos again. We are now a trifle slower. And again, he's given me a specific (laughs) speed for my quarter notes. And guess what? (laughs) I've never actually checked it. (laughs) Why is everything small? Oh, those are fun. Okay, so these little itty bitty dudes, these are called grace notes. And we're supposed to smash all that in? Uh (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. What's gonna happen is I have a half rest right here. I play this whole note and I hold it down for the first two beats while I wait for that half rest to be through. And then after I've gotten through my half rest, I smash these guys in really quick before I get to my half note, which is my other two beats in the measure. And meanwhile, I am sustaining that whole note for the duration of the measure. SF means sforzando. So that's like a uh, accent mark even, but a little bit more. So more, more? <laughs> yeah, a little bit more, more. <laughs> <laughs> so a sforzando mark is like an accent mark, except it's just a little bit more, more, more. <laughs> this, I, I actually fight this line a little bit. Um, it says that I should be piano here. I always want it to be louder than that for some reason. And then the sforzando doesn't help anything because I've got this little crescendo and in that space of time, I have to be quite a bit louder by the time I get to that sforzando to make it really sforzando. And then it's even more of the same. Like it has to be even softer and then I've got a crescendo, but no, no, no more sforzando. Now it's gonna be pianissimo. (laughs) So I fight that line just a little bit. I feel like I never quite get it right. Um, Poco? R-I-T, RIT, POCO RIT stands for POCO RITARDANDO, which means slow down a little bit, and then dryly. So basically, Copeland is telling us to make sure that these notes, which are marked staccato, all sound very separated. You should not really have any pedal wetness making these sound connected at all, or blurry, or muddy, or anything like that. Apparently, your notes are dirt, and if you use your pedal, it makes them muddy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> because the metal makes yes. it wet. <laughs> well, it does. <laughs> it is known. Oh, look. Huh. Ah, tempo. <laughs> Which, by the way, I still don't know exactly how fast that's supposed to be because I've never checked it. <laughs> okay, look at all these. You know what these are now? Mini day crescendos. No. <laughs> you remember what they're actually called, right? Accent. See, she learns. <laughs> mm-hmm. That one has letters. The RH? Oh. And it has a little bracket. Did I ever actually explain that on the other page? Okay. I don't know. So the RH and the LH, they just mean right hand or left hand. It's really not that secrety. But it's on the. Oh, it's on the you? bass clef staff? Okay. That's a good point. So normally things that are on the bass staff are for the left hand. Ah. But 
in this case, um, he wanted me to use my right hand to play this because that's a lot easier than trying to play this whole chord with my left hand. We can get more force and accuracy if we split them up and just use both hands. Also, it probably just kind of looks better right there to use both hands doing this passage. Um, so all those things combined, he wanted me to use my right hand to play some of these notes and my left hand to play some of the notes, one of the notes. And so he marked right hand there. And then when we get up to here, where there is what would normally have been a right hand note on the treble staff, he says to do that with the left hand. And we have an octave. Yeah, a tava. So that means that at this point, this note should be played an octave higher than where it is written on the staff. Which looks like it should be pretty high then. Yeah, it is very high. And we have a weird do. Yes. So this is a mark that means to play a glissando, it, which is when you drag your fingers across the keys to hit all the white keys on the way down to a certain note, which in this case, my target is the D right above middle C. So I start from this note and I go shoom down the keys until I hit that note. And the hope is that you will stop Boom, right on that note when you get there and not go past it. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. then we've just got that, which is repetition from before. Uh, more repetition, more repetition. So this little guy I ha is just one note that I have to cram in before I play this one. And then it has a little curvy line right there that connects it to my whole note. And that means that I should, after playing that grace note, I should sustain it for the whole measure while I play all of that junk. My left hand is very busy <laughs> in that measure. These numbers right here are just telling me which fingers to use on my right hand. Here's another one of those fermatas over a bar line. It's telling me that I should stop at the bar line and just hang out for a moment. <laughs> and then here he says, still faster. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, go even faster. You were going fast before, but now faster. This is another metronome marking that I haven't checked. <laughs> and here we have some interesting directions for how to execute this passage. These stems that are pointing down are for my left hand. And he tells us that, um, just to be sure we understand, with the LH, but then he also tells us how to position the hands on the keyboard. He says that my left hand should be positioned above my right hand in order to execute this passage in the most easy way possible. These are the notes for my right hand with the stems pointing up. And again, he just reinforces that with a little RH to make sure that I understand. And I just continue in that pattern for the duration of this passage. And at this point, you get an octave above. Yes, he starts out uh, writing the notes going up an octave. We start out three iterations in this octave and then four iterations in this octave, and then he wants it to go another octave higher. So we have an Atava sign and then it, he writes it again. And then lots of weights. Yes, so we have um, an eighth rest followed by two quarter rests, followed by an eighth rest <laughs> with a fermata. So yeah, <laughs> we, we just kind of stop there for a bit. And this is actually the beginning of another really super fun passage. So we're going to have to turn the page. Here we continue with the thing where the left hand is in charge of some of the notes. And the right hand is in charge of the other notes. Oh, <laughs> so he's been telling us that we should have these pauses at the bar lines and some of them were marked long. This one is now short. So he says, stop but not for very long this time. Hmm. Okay, why are our natural signs in parentheses? Okay, so the reason why he marks this as an F natural and this is a D natural and this is a C natural is because in the left hand, I am playing sharps. I'm playing sharped versions of those notes in the same octave. And so normally that would mean that this F sharp should be sharped here as well, but he doesn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> so the here is actually a triple piano, which is pianissimo, and it means that I should play very, very softly, very much slower. Another tempo change. Uh, also with a metronome marking that I haven't checked. Double dots. The first two beats of the measure are filled with a half note, 
And then this is almost the other two beats of the measure. Almost the other two beats. So this is just a 16th note a 16th note worth of time all smashed in. So that, that's actually kind of tricky right there. I have to make sure that I line these two notes up at the start of that 16th note, and then I play three 60, nope, 32nd notes. I play three, <laughs> I play three 32nd notes against four 32nd notes. Mm. Okay, well, let's see, we have hold back. Okay, so this just means that I want to make the music sound like it's, there, there's like a particular feeling to holding back in music. I'm not letting the beat progress the way that it should. Also, as he composed this music, clearly he was imagining a bit of a story. So we have this, these very bell-like tones, and then here, uh, with the pianissimo, which means very soft, he says chimes and echo. So these are like the original bell tolls, and then somewhere in the house, very quietly, we hear it echoing after the original chimes. The dot above means something different than the dot behind? Uh, you mean this? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, so these dots are adding time value to the note. The dots above, again, are staccato. Mm. And the lines above are called tenuto marks. So when you have them both together, it means that they have to be separated from each other, but you still want the notes to have their full value. Vaguely. <laughs> yes, I love that marking, actually. <laughs> Again, we have <laughs> which means <laughs> very, very soft. <laughs> and remember when he had those notes in the left hand that were marked staccato and he said dryly? Here he says vaguely, and we have a pedal marking that lasts through those staccato notes. So believe it or not, it actually does sound different if you play staccato with the pedal down versus playing legato with the pedal down. So even though the pedal is going to sustain the tone, the, the hammer is going to strike the string a little bit differently when you play staccato. So it's actually really important to pay attention to articulations, even when you're using the pedal. And so we don't want it to sound dry. Now we're going to let it just all kind of blend vaguely together. Mm. It's going to be mud. <laughs> <laughs> now we want to make yes, our keys now wet. we want mud <laughs> on purpose. Yes, okay, so remember I pointed out that the pedal mm -hmm. is sustaining stuff, right? This is what it's sustaining. So these, we are not actually physically holding them down. The notes aren't there, but he, the ties are like, if we could be, we would be holding that down. I guess technically my right hand could be. This is really just saying, these notes are continuing. Yep, oh, metronome. <laughs> guess what, guys? I haven't checked it. Huh? Deliciously. That does not say deliciously. Although this section is kind of delicious. <laughs> Delicately. <laughs> so it says, it says delicately. Yes, it says to play delicately. So we need to make this sound like the, I, I imagine the delicate movements of a cat that's actually trying not to knock things over. <laughs> so what else we got? Smashy notes. Yep, we've got more mashy notes. And, right, okay, so. Anytime we have simile after a marking in music, it means that we should continue doing whatever the marking before the simile is in whatever pattern has been established. So here, Copeland has established that I should begin the pedal mark on the first and third beat of the measure and end the pedal mark at the end of the second and fourth beats in the measure. So then when he says over here, pedal simile, that means that I should continue pedaling in that pattern until I get to a spot where it's doing something different, for, like down here. There we go, now it's doing something different. So we also have a marking poco più forte. Poco più forte means that it should be a little bit louder, just, just louder than it was before. I don't know why he didn't just say mezzo piano or mezzo forte or something there. We did have a piano marking back there. So maybe just a little bit more, not fully. I don't know, maybe. It's <laughs> louder, um, but not but not that much louder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then we're back to piano over here. Scrolling down. Scrolly, scrolly. 
We have... Ah, this big long line thing. Okay, so this is diminuendo e ritenuto, which means slow down and get softer. Well, this, this part, diminuendo, means to get softer, and this part, ritenuto, means to slow down. And then the dotted lines just tell us how long to spread out that diminuendo and ritenuto. Another little fermata over a bar line, because we can do that now. <laughs> okay, this one's fun. That's a sforzando immediately followed by a pianissimo. On the same note. Uh-huh. <laughs> but how could so, you do yeah, it on okay. the same so note? So technically it's not really possible. What's actually going to end up happening is that this is going to be my sforzando note. It will be very forceful and loud. But then the note that comes after will be pianissimo, pretty much about as soft as I can be. Um, also, he says tempo primo, that's what that means, tempo primo, very fast. And he gives me another metronome marking. Molto crescendo, so molto means much, and that means that I should crescendo or get louder a lot. And you can see these dotted lines here are, are beginning. So you can see these dotted lines are continuing. And you can see that I am supposed to make my molto crescendo spread out over this much of the music until I get to here, where it is fortissimo, or mm. very loud. We have a metronome narc. Yeah, another metronome marking that I haven't bothered to actually. And then for one note, we have an ottava. So that one note should be an octave higher than written. So on the previous page, there was a spot where it changed to treble clef in my left hand. You can see that here. So all of these notes are written in the treble clef for my left hand. That continues here, all through that. It continues here, all through this. But then when I get to here, then my left hand's on the bass clef now. And then here, so is my right hand for one note. And then, <laughs> and then it changes back. Both hands go back to being in the treble clef. I think it's gonna change again pretty quick. Yeah, so it's, it's treble clef in both hands for the duration of this full measure. But then here, back to bass clef for the left hand and quickly followed by the right hand. And then, and then the right hand goes back to treble clef. Left hand actually stays put this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got some thing going on right here. okay so this this is like on that other time that i had the chord that was split between my two hands right hand takes part of the chord left hand takes the other part and then up here where the note that would normally have been a right hand note because it's on the treble clef now it's they, they tell me to use the left hand this is actually exactly the same measure from before but the difference here is that this time my glissando is going to go even lower i'm going to end up landing on this low g and mm -hmm. i'm not going to miss mm -hmm. i will stop there mm -hmm. no further mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Dry and heavy. Right. Okay, so I know pedal. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to play it loudly and heavily. So believe it or not, you can actually have different kinds of tones on the piano just based on how you strike the keys. So it's not enough for me to just have a brassy, loud tone. I also need to make it sound clunky. Next page. Oh, look, we're getting crescendos again. Uh huh. So the, this part, I, I really just kind of picture the cat has basically caught the mouse at this point. And so this right here is the mouse trying to escape and the cat catching it again. Mouse tries to escape and the cat gets it again. Like if you hear this passage, it just really sounds like Yeah, so we get louder, we get softer, we get louder, we get softer. And then with much exuberance. <laughs> this part's really fun to play too. <laughs> on the way down the piano. It's great. Um, and then here I'm basically just banging on the keys. No, here, here's where I really get to just bang on the keys. Look at that fortissimo and look at the size of these chords these things are massive look at that have you broken your keyboard yet <laughs> no keyboard is holding up admirably <laughs> <laughs> and we have a sforzando so not only is it fortissimo but now this last one is sforzando the fun thing about this last chord so i i hit these notes these are all 16th notes but then this guy part of the chord is a half note. So I hit these really loud, really hard, 
and then I let go of all the other notes except for the bottom one, which sustains all the way through there. And then it's got a fermata. That's a fun moment in the music because we've got this huge, heavy, loud chord, and then all that's left is the bottom note just continuing to ring. Very cool. Tempo two. So somewhere back there we had a tempo that was marked quarter note is 66 quarter notes per minute. Here we're gonna be suddenly quite a bit slower than we were. Um, we're gonna be piano, <laughs> which is quite a bit softer than we were. And he furthermore informs us that we need to be softly and playing in a funereal. Somebody is making noise behind us. Anyways. Cat interruption, we are doing softly. Yes, yeah, so he says, he says we should be softly, but furthermore, he also says softly in a funereal manner. <laughs> so I guess somebody died. <laughs> Probably the mouse, poor mouse. And it's pianissimo. And then it's diminuendoing, so we're getting even softer. <laughs> All the way down to peony and Ianissimo. That's when we just airplay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have um, the fermatas, so we just kind of hang out there very, very, very soft. Oops. So at this point, we're basically just going to wait for most of the sound to die away on its own, is honestly what's going on here. And, and then, we have more notes. So um, we're going to be very soft, very, very soft. And then I love that he says limping slightly <laughs> like it ha just the having the rhythm isn't enough for copeland he had to also tell us what he's trying to imitate he says no pedal no pedal, it's no pedal. <laughs> and, and so these notes these are going to be long and this one's going to be short so i guess whoever was the victor however did not emerge from this battle unscathed <laughs> because they're, they're limping away. So I love that the last thing we hear in this piece is one final limp. And that's how it ends. I hope you guys got some good information out of this episode. If you did, please like and subscribe to our YouTube. Thanks for letting us steal your screens for a while. Stay, Stay rogue. rogue.